want to encourage every leader, every head of department, every pastor. You know, you, there are some few things that um, we cannot um, compromise. You know, if you're in a place of leadership, we encourage you to do it with the excellence in which our God is known with. Nothing ever, ever happened, you know, without conscious exertion, you know, towards needed and required gold. You know, anywhere you see order, it means force must have been exerted up upon chaos. You know, so I will encourage, and if you're a worker, you know, we encourage you. Excellence is something that we cannot compromise. Well, um, we um, are already in a new government and a new regime. Can we put our hands together and celebrate God, you know? Um, you as a kingdom citizen, your responsibility, you know, is to pray for where you stay. And also, you have a responsibility as a kingdom person to be able to press into the facet facilities of governance and everything that is happening here. You know, I mean, in the nation, we are not here to uh, spectate. We're actually here to take over. You know, we, you know, you know, and so um, you you have a responsibility to begin to press in. Um, we kept saying. Uh, sudden promotion, you know, is already on us, and God is promoting us individuals into the places of influence. Um, and the reason is so that you can be able to intercept and derail the plan of the enemy. You don't belong at the gate. You can start at the gate, but you are actually created and born for the palace. You know, it is in the palace that decisions are made and are changed. Am I talking here? Come on, put your hands together. You're supposed to press in yourself, you know, into that place, you know, and don't relent back. You know, the kingdoms of this world are getting ready to become the kingdom of our God. And in every of the spheres of influence, you know, our um, the flag of our kingdom has been to hoisted in that place, you know, and it's on you to be able to press in, you know, and to bring in the kingdom of God. Jesus said that when you're going to pray, I want you to pray that let the kingdom come. Let the influence, the governing influence of our king. All right. Um, I will encourage us. Of course, House of Refuge 2.0 will encourage us whatever, do whatever we can. Uh, we're trusting God, you know, that by June we should be able to move um, into that uh, place. Few payments, you know, the, the rails will be able to come down. And then we'll do the screening. And then, you know, on Sunday, I, I told you that the major thing that is remaining is just the wiring and then the light fittings. All right. But again, the rails, you know, we're short in some payment so that the thing can start moving from Lagos. So do whatever you can. All right. So that we can move out of this place. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Help me just reduce that loudness and then give me a punch hallelujah well um uh, with is it on on sunday uh like i say my son is a son in the house you know of course you know he had to come for the inauguration of fintry um uh, engineer peter who is also an elder uh, come on put your hands together you know uh he's he's been with us right from um, Sunday, all right? I, I know he would not want me to mention, but I'll mention it on Sunday when he's not here, <laughs> you know, but um, uh, we want to appreciate your presence with us here. Well, uh, there's a work that I have and I'm going to bring it. Today, what I want to do is to help us at about five, uh, there's something on the table I forgot to give them from, you know, this, this white paper, the, the five characteristics, you know, of the Joseph uh, generation. And that's what I'm going to do then on Sunday. We'll start rounding, you know, um, up. Uh, one of the things that I'm desiring to do before, uh, of course, we know that in June, of course, it's empowerment. I don't know whether we'll bring in 
somebody or I will do in-house, you know, but I also will want to have time to press in, not necessarily on the healing, you know, but I want to press in more light, you know, on who we are, you know, in Christ so that we can be able to begin to walk with it. All right. Um, we have been dealing with the Joseph generation. You know, I don't know whether, why you, you just kept changing my sound. This is also loud. It's not together. Let it be together and then give it the punch. All right. Um, Joseph generation. And um, basically, we're trying to acclimatize our mind based on what God is doing in this end time. All right, and the Joseph generation, we said that is a type of Christ. All right, these are people that are in the mold, you know, of Christ. Of course, we said that the Joseph is one person in the Old Testament that is so closely related in types and shadow, prefigured, you know, of Christ, you know, and based on what God, you know, is doing. And basically, when I started dealing with allowing us to understand Christ the person, Christ, the principle, Christ, the people, and then Christ, the place, all right, you know, because if you don't understand all of these things, you're not going to see yourself, you know, in the Joseph generation and the new breed that God is actually raising, you know, in this end time, you know, to be able to bring in the force, all right, the Bible says that uh, he's going to crush all the enemies under, you know, your feet or his feet, all right, I want you to know that the feet are in the body, so you, the Christ, the people, all right, um, our cardinal scripture had been Isaiah 9, where we deal with, and the government shall be, and the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end, all right, the kingdom of God is enlarging, is increasing, all right, and of his peace, all right, I know that the world, when you look at it, is chaotic, but the healing of the nations will only be done through Christ, all right, but now you are thinking of Christ, the person, all right, but he's actually dealing with Christ, the people, all right, and you are of the exact image. On Sunday, we said that Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, and he is the firstborn of the new creation, all right. If you want to know and see how God looks like, you look at Christ, but if you want to know and see how you look like, you look at Christ, all right, okay, because, you know, when the new creation is coming forth, he is the image, he is the firstborn, I am born of the mold, he's actually my twin, all right, so if you want to know how I look like, I look at Jesus, that's why I said it here, that Kenneth Hagin is not the standard, T.L. Osborne is not the standard, Smith Wigglesworth are not the standard, all right. Ida Hosa is not the standard. All right. All right. If you want the standard, the standard is Jesus. Am I talking in House of Refuge? All right. Jesus is the standard. Because if you want to know how God looks like, you look at Jesus. But if you also want to know how you look like, all right, you don't look at. That's why competition is will kill you. You don't look at any man. You look at Christ. Am I talking here? He is the image of the firstborn, you know, of the new creation. Okay, I'm going to take it a little bit before I begin to deal with, all right? And when you begin to understand who you are, remember we have already established when God put his breath and Adam stood up, all right? God said that we're going to make man in our image, in our likeness. Don't forget, colloquial grew in wisdom and in stature and in the fear of God. God doesn't grow in wisdom. God is wisdom. All right, but man can grow in wisdom. Am I talking in house of refuge? Come on, put your hands together. Okay. The Bible said that he was tempted in all manner of... You cannot tempt God. God cannot be tempted. Okay, but man can be tempted. Am I talking here? Come on, put your hands together. So Jesus Christ walked in here to show you exactly what you are. All right, it will take a church and pastors to mess your mind and reduce you. All right, so that you sit down here with 
every of the power of heaven in the inside of you and you relegate what is in you and you're looking at one man thinking he's the only person that has all the power. Meanwhile, as you're seated here, the totality of God is in the inside of you. Everything, come and put your hands together. The totality of God, the life of God. All right, I said the life of God. Okay, right now that you're seated here, everything about God is in the inside of you, the life of God, okay? And the Bible says that, you know, out of you, you know, you know, you know, out of your belly, rivers, all right? On Sunday, I made it, I said that when you talk about rivers or living water, you're dealing with a flowing water, all right? A dead water is a water that is stagnant, all right? So the life that is in the inside of you, when the Bible calls it a living water, it means it's a life that can flow. Am I talking here? All right? So if the life is in the inside of you, that life can flow to your body and it can give life to every part of your being. Come on, am I talking in this place? The factory of healing in the inside of you. All right? I might not touch you. My hands cannot be on you, but let me announce to you. I don't care what you walk into this place. Uh, as your eyes begin to be open, something that is already in the inside of you is about to hit your body. Come on, put your hands together. Look at your neighbor and say that the life of God is in me. Come on, come on, look at your neighbor and say, the life of God is in me. You carry God. The have the totality of God. And now, in him is life. And the life is the light. So the light is changing your body, developing your body. And we have this treasure in earthen vessel. Don't look at me anyhow, but when you look at me, you're seeing somebody that carries God. Some of you look at me, you want to see the move of God. How many of you want to see the move of God? All right, look at it. That's God moving now. Because when you walk, you are actually, ha! You're looking somewhere, but it is you. That's what you carry. That's who you are. The whole of God is in the inside of you. The whole power of heaven, Christ, anointing, you know, Holy Spirit, power is all the same thing. And that thing is all in the inside of you. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. I said it in this place, you know, as a believer, you don't receive what you already have. All right, you walk in what you already have. Wigglesworth said that it's an insult to ask God for power if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Teal Osborne said that there are two things that you never ask God. Number one, you don't ask God to do what he has already done. Number two, you don't ask God to do what he has asked you to do. Come and put your hands together if you understand. All right. So when you understand that, you know that, you see, Jesus Christ, he never prayed for anybody to be healed. All right. Why? He only speak it. He command it. He, why? Because he carries, there's something in him. The same life that was in Jesus when he was walking on earth, listen to me, is the same life that is in the inside of you. Okay. I'm going to take you deeper. Let me say it again. The same life that is in Jesus. All right, so, and then the life moves. The life was in him, it moves to his body. One woman said, this life has gone to his body and it has moved to the cloth. If I can touch it, it will dry up every of the sickness that is in my body. Come on, put your hands together. There's something in the inside of you, if you allow it, it can move to your body. When that life is in your spirit, all right, okay, it's called salvation. When it moves to your soul, it's called deliverance. When it moves to your body, you call it healing. And that life has the ability to move into every part of your body. All right. Jesus Christ on Sunday, I told you, he wanted to show them how that light moved. He called them, went up to the Mount Transfiguration, stood up, and then the light moved. When the light left his spirit, it came to the body and his body glowed. You're not hearing what I'm talking about. That's the same light that is in the inside of you. It's the life of God. It's the light that God is made with. It's the light that God breathed with. It's God himself. It's eternal life. It's abundant life. It's life. Right now that you are seated and you're looking at me, that same life is in the inside of you. I said that same life. That life, it will dry up cancer. It will dry up arthritis. Back pain, it will kill it. When it meets anything that is of the cause, it, poof, it kills it. Am I talking here? When the body is with it, it gives life to it. If the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in the inside of you, that same spirit will give life. Look at your neighbor and say, the life of God is in me. All right. So when you walk like that, you are not ordinary. 
Later, I'm going to show you there is a new species. Immediately, you receive that life, a new being showed forth. A being that has never existed. The problem is that you don't know how to divide when that other life died and when the new life appeared. And you have to be able to start working, you know, on that. All right, we've dealt with it on Sunday, how it came. But you see, I'm going to pick up, Pastor said that I don't do uh, recap. And that basically, I've not done recap. I'm just pushing it in. All right, all right. So how do I stay connected? On Sunday, we said that you, you have to say, you see, if fruits are going to show forth, all right, the fruit, the fruit of the root of sin is death, sickness, lack, depression, all right, okay, all right. So, what flows in you is not your action, what flows in you is your connection. That's why in Romans said that they are seen as even if they don't sin. The reason is because it's not in good works, it's the connection. When they are connected to Adam, they are connected to a root called sin. Out of sin flows death. Sickness is death in baby form. Are you going to hear what I'm talking about? All right. Okay, but guess what? When the life of God left Adam, it took Adam 900 years to learn how to die. Because that life so saturated the body. I was telling the pastors while we were driving, I said that believers should be some of the most difficult people to die on earth. Why? Because the life is unkillable. That life, you can't, dis- it's indestructible. All right. Okay. You know, you know, you know, John, they wanted to kill him. They killed him. They did. He couldn't die. They dropped him in oil, boil oil. He couldn't die. Because the life, if you allow it to function at its max, it's unkillable. They carried him, they threw him on, on, you know, on Patmos. He started seeing revelations. You know, hear what I'm talking about. That's what is in the inside of you. Come on, you know, hear what I'm talking about. So why are we where we are? All right. The reason is because you are not living in the newness of life. I'm going to help us there before I begin. All right. Now, 2 Corinthians 10 says that you need to take every thought. And everything that exalts itself against the knowledge, you need to bring it into captivity. There's a struggle between the new you and the old, where you're coming from. All right? And it's in the mind. If the mind, the mind is the gate, is the dam, is the gate that closes the flow of that what is in the inside of you into the body and then into. And then as you are being transformed, you are changed into an image. You need to grow up in him. Hallelujah. I said it on Sunday. I said, the gifts of the spirit are actually for carnal and baby believers. Jesus Christ never operated in any of the gifts of the spirit. He actually operated in the fullness of the spirit. The gift of the spirit, you give it to help people that are not yet operating in the fullness of the spirit. So that, all right, so I come into this place. People are to be able to take every thought captive. So every thinking that wants to remind you of your own life, you capture it. Every thinking that wants to remind you of your weakness. Because the new person doesn't have weakness. He doesn't have fear. The new person is made in the mold of Jesus Christ. He is Christ the person. The people. You have to pull it down. And you have to sustain in who you are. Look at your neighbor and say that the life of God is in the inside of you. So whenever anything that is... Because it's a new life. You have to practice it. Whenever any thought that is coming to emphasize where you used to be. Now, on Sunday, I said something. Once you are freed from the root of sin, all right, you know, you are, you know, he made you master. That's why I said that sin shall no longer have dominion, all right, over you. What that means is that now you have dominion. Masters choose. They have choice. On their own, they choose. All right, so it's on you. You can choose to allow the horses to still flow in you, or you can choose to remain attached to the vine so that the fruit that is coming from the trunk will flow in your life. It's your choice. Now you are a master. You're a master. You can decide. And it's on you to begin to hold and take as prisoners of war anything that is contrary to this new man. And the prop coming on Sunday, you're going to come with 20 people that the life went out from the inside of you. The cripple are walking. The blind eyes are, are you getting what I'm talking about? I, I said, are you getting what I'm talking about? It's, come on, 
So, but you see, you have to grow up into that. And when you grow up, growing up into that, there will be things that will remind you of where you, you have to hold it as a prisoner. This is not me. You hold it. Don't you ever ponder on it. You hold it as a prisoner. Every stinking thinking, you act like, you know, you have to act like a warrior. Take it as a prisoner of war. When your body, you arrest it. And then you begin to make it conform, you know, to the image. All right. The reason is because, listen to me, anything that you're exalting in your life or in your mind, you're exalting in your life. Let me say it again. Anything that you're exalting in your mind, you're exalting in your life. Let me say it again. Anything that you're exalting in your mind, you're exalting in your life. How do you exalt it in your mind? Is you consider it and you ponder it. Anything that your mind is dwelling on will show forth in your life. All right. So when Jesus Christ, the Bible said that he reconciled. Remember, there has to be a shift and a connection. He now cut you off from the root. He now translated you from the kingdom of darkness, from the root of death. And then he brought you into his kingdom, hook you up and hook you up to righteousness. And in that righteous, righteousness is the life of God. Then you have to set your mind there. Anything that your mind is on, you're exalting. All right, okay? Because whatever you're, you know, and if it's not Jesus that is being exalted, then maybe you're exalting the causes. You're exalting lack, death, sickness, fear. There's no fear in you. How do I know? The Bible said that Christ has not given you the spirit of fear. So if fear is rising up, that fear is supposed to be arrested and be made prisoner of war. Because it's coming from your thought. And the new man, there's no fear in the new man. In the new man is a spirit of love, of power, and of sound mind. Come on, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. Come on, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. So if fear is coming, it's coming from somewhere, you have to, you have to, with your eyes open, arrest it as a prisoner of war. If you allow it, you're going to exalt it. If you exalt it in your mind, it will show forth in your life. And, th and that's where the war is going to be. All right. If it is not Jesus, you have to be able to. <laughs> we said it on Sunday. Jesus said that, I am the light of the world. Then he went to the, another scripture. He said that, you are the light of the world. The same thing that he used to describe him, self, is the same word he used to describe you. Acts 9. Saul, he knocked him off on his horse. He fell. Jesus talking, said that, why are you persecuting me? Paul had never met Jesus. Paul said that, what do you mean? Who are you? Jesus said that, it is Jesus that you are persecuting. Question, who was Paul killing? Christian. Who did Jesus say he was persecuting? Jesus. What that means that you are, ex you are, oh my, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. The new man is made in the same image of Jesus. Oh no, come on, preacher. Somebody may guide me in the name of John. In John 1, 4, it says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So when you take a Bible, every part of the Bible is Jesus. Right? If you carry the Bible, you put it in a blender, you pour out, Jesus will come out. Everything in the Bible is Jesus. All right. So James. In James 1, when you go to 19, he begins to say something. He, he's talking to you about looking into the law of liberty. He's talking about the word. When you enter into your bathroom and you stand in the front of mirror, who do you see? You see yourself, right? Yes. So he said that if you look at and then you come out and you forget how you are looking, then there's a problem with you. You become a forgetful hearer and you will not take anything and get anything from God. You see, you stand in the front row, then you look. You see, some of you, you are confused with that scripture. You did not know that God is trying to reveal something about you. You think he's talking about you looking at, the, at your mirror and you're seeing yourself and you don't know that there's a pimple here. No, that's not what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. Because you see, the word is a mirror. And the word is Jesus. So when you look at it, the only thing that you're going to see is Jesus. 
So you're supposed to look. That's why as you are looking in the image, you are changed into the same thing that you are looking. So, so when I look, when I take the word, I, I'm supposed to be seeing Christ, me, me. What you see in the mirror is your picture. I, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. That, oh, no, no, no. Okay, so he's saying that, and that's where the problem is. All right, when you look, you forget that you are actually Christ the people. So you now started talking as a man, man in the world. Meanwhile, there is a change when you appear, new person appeared. You are talking like the old man. You forgot that you are a new man. And the new man is actually in the image of Christ. When you look at it, am I talking about? Are you, are you hearing what I'm talking about? As I said, so when you come out, you're talking like, you're talking what the other people are, the people that are not in the newness of life, new creation. And so, but when you look and then you saw the Christ, you are healed. You are, you saw, then you now change and you forget that you're actually Christ. You're supposed to grow up into, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. Oh no, somebody began in the Somebody began in the And you're supposed to keep looking and then, as, and then keep changing into it. The whole totality of God is the inside of you. It's supposed to begin as you grow up in it. supposed to show forth completely in the... Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the life of God is in you. All right. So you need to arrest because, you know, anything that is contrary to who you are, you have to arrest it as a prisoner. And whatever you exalt... And that is how you're going to reign. They that have received the gift of righteousness, righteousness, they shall reign. How are they going to reign? What will make you reign is the life that is in you. The life will make you reign in this life. I mean, let me say it. The life that is in you, what made Jesus Christ reign when he was here was the life that was in him. Because the life can't be below anything. So if you receive the gift of righteousness and you are attached to him, then you receive the life. The life makes you to reign in this life. That's how you should read that place. The life that you have will make you to reign over this life. Let me say it again. The life that is in you will make you to reign, you know, over. All right. So if, and, and if you're going to reign in life, it's going to be determined by what you exalt in your mind. If what is in your mind is that you're weak, you're broke, you're always weak, you're not, no, you cannot, it's what you exalt in your mind. Listen to me, you're so righteousness that you can right any wrong when you appear. You're too right. If you are not righteous, then God is not righteous. Because what made you righteous is his righteousness. Let me announce to you again. How many of you have Christ in the inside of you? Wave your hand. God can never enter into anything that is having flower. God can never enter into anything that is having flower. So the problem is your mind. That's why you need to make it a prisoner of war. Something is fighting you. God is saying that I am in you. So if I am in you, it means you are right. You are too right that you can right any wrong. You're too perfect. Why? God can never enter into anything that is having a sin. You're not sin. Your righteousness. That righteousness is the life of God. That life can never be defeated. That life makes you to reign. How you reign is based on what you exalt. So if you exalt weakness, if you exalt the what you see around, that's how, what, okay, be, why? Because when you are a king, you have a choice. When you are a master, you have a choice on what you exalt. And what you exalt, that's what is going to show. Now you will choose to exalt your new man, who you are, where you are seated. Later I'm going to show you, because you are from heaven, you have to know what is in heaven. And that's where the problem is. Flying on your head. If you don't do that, listen to me. As you begin to move, Satan is going to bombard you constantly. People are going to, out of their, you know, people are going to bombard you when you meet them. Church, church people will also bombard you 
You see weakness here. You see weakness. You see failures there. They will bombard you. And you make a mistake and think that that's a normal life. That's not a normal life of a new person. That's not, the, okay, okay. So you come to church and you're going to see that. And then the wall will bombard you. The wall will say that nobody is perfect. We're all weak. If you're perfect here, raise your hand. So when they tell you the anointing, the healing anointing, the power, no, there's nothing. It's in your connection. Once you're connected, it flows. What flows in you is dependent on what you're connected to. If death flows in you, you're connected to sin. If life flows in you, you're connected to righteousness. It's not art. Oh, my hand are shifting, right? My hand are shifting. The highest thing that you must do is to stay connected. I have a lot of things to tell you. You can't handle it. So if the world and everything is perfect, I can't look at anything here. That's why I can't look at you to determine what I can become. I can't look at the church. I can't look, even look at the pastor. Because he's not the standard. The standard is Christ. When you look at Christ, that's what makes you to know what you can become. Not a pastor. Not a man. All of them. How, however, how good they are. They are examples that we can learn from, but they are not standard. The standard is the firstborn of the new creation and made in the mold of that. You want to know what you can become? That's why you can say that I want the anointing of, you know, cool man. I want, no, 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 no. How can you? And then you see sick people in church. I want double portion of the anointing. Why should you look for double portion while Jesus is your portion? When you have him, you have everything. Why are you looking for a double somewhere? No, when I have him, I have everything. I have the total portion. Later, I'm going to teach you how to release that life. That life can be released. It has dynamics. That's my responsibility here. So you cannot look at anything here to tell you you what is normal. Let me say it again. I cannot look at anything here to tell me what is normal. What is normal is what is in Christ. If it is not in Christ, it's not normal. You can't look at anything to tell you what is normal. I cannot look at anything here. That is why Colossians 3. Give me Colossians 3 from 1 to 3. Taking you into troubles, but we should get characteristics. But how many of you are happier in church? Colossians 3. If talking about the new man now, if now you have been raised with Christ, seek those things which are where above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand. Listen to me. I told you you are made in the image of Christ. Not even the Christ that walked on the earth is the Christ that is exalted. The Christ that walked on the earth did not have all the power. It was after he came out of the grave, then he now, his mouth said all powers in heaven. That's the one that you are made of. That's the one that as he is, so you are right now on earth. The exalted Christ. Oh no, somebody began what, somebody began what I'm talking about. So you have to seek where you're coming from. Now next verse, we'll go to one to three. Look at it. If you're not operating in the full extent of who you are, it's where your mind is set. If you're from heaven and you're actually here as an alien being, listen to me, you are an alien being. There used to be a movie, Aliens, right? You have never seen aliens? Look at one. Never existed. I just appear. Alien being. We are aliens. I came from heaven. Jesus was alien. That's why he said that. Just as my father sent me. You see, when you send something, you send him into a place where he has never been before. Right? So, so I sent you. I've never been here. He just sent me. When you're saying that, no, no, you're looking at the old one. He's dead. Now he's a new one. I just arrived. I'm an alien being. And 
Where did he send me from? He sent me from heaven. Now you must be stupid not to know what your heavens look like and what it has. So that's why you are on earth. You are just walking. Okay? You don't know what you are, where you are coming from has. What does where you are coming from have? You don't know. Everything where you're coming from, what it has, is in the word of God. That's why the only way you're going to put your mind is above. Not here. Because you're not from here. You are sent from there, here. Why did she say that he sent you? The reason why, you see, when I send you somewhere, is because you have never been there. You are hearing what I'm talking about. The reason why he sent Christ is because he has never been, I don't know, Jesus. Yes, same thing. You are an alien being. All right? And the only way you can function, that's why when he was here, Jesus, what he said, I do nothing except what I see my father do. How? His mind is there. So he sees what is in heaven, where he's coming from. So he now does it here. And that's exactly. Why are you doing what is in the earth? You are not supposed to do anything that is on the earth. You're supposed to do that which is in heaven. You get it and you bring it here. And everything that is in heaven is rulership, is dominion. So when you come here, you exercise power. That's why when he sees the sick, he didn't beg, he didn't pray. He said, come out, get out, be healed. Jesus never prayed for any sick person. So this is what God said. Jesus said, I give you power over unclean spirit. Look at what, cast them out. You are never supposed to pray with demons. Never supposed to pray for healing for somebody. No. You meet sickness, you command the sickness to go. That's who kings are. Power, authority. That's how to reign. Then I said, Father Jesus, please, if you hear will, heal you. No, it is his will. That's why he gave me power to do it. And when you begin to know what you know, you can say, listen to me. Your faith will always follow your intention. That's why your faith must be directed. I intend that you be healed. I direct my faith. That's my intention. My faith follows it. Later, I'm going to show you. You have the faith of God. You don't have equipment problem. I'm going to help you. Oh, no. When I'm, it's too much on you, right? Time is too much on you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. All right. So when he said that when you go, Kaza, he's, you know, the, the power he gave you that evict them. So when you meet, in fact, in fact, a demon, you evict it. Get out. All right. Now, why will the demon go out? Because in your mouth, when you speak or you lay hands, life goes. And when the life goes, it drives out. If it is sickness, it kills the, the sickness. Life, it drives, it, it kills it. Okay, but how does he do what he did? He said that everything I do, I see my father does. So, your problem, you're made in the, in the mold of Jesus. You have to see what Jesus Christ is doing and has done in the world. That's what you do. That's why he said that you will do what I have done and greater you will do. The reason you will do what he has done is that Jesus before Christ, you can do what he has done. Greater is Jesus after cross. Because that's what, that's what you are made up of. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus is in you. Christ is in you. Holy Ghost is in you. Power is in you. Anointing is in you. Everything is in you. So what are you looking outside? Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. You set your mind on the realities of heaven. You set your mind. If it's not in him, it's not in heaven, it can't be in my life. If it is not in heaven, it can't be in what is around me. Look at this crazy woman. See how faith works? Crazy woman. She sat down. She, I was telling Pastor Helga. She set the time when she will get her healing. She was in her house. She said, that's, you have to know how dangerous you are. You can set the time when you, whatever you want, when you want it. She sat down, she set the time. She said, I'm going to come out. I'm going to touch. When I touch, I will be healed. Faith with intention. She set the time. You have to be able to say that, I will come out of poverty. Why will you come out of poverty? Because all wealth is in the inside of you. Come on, put your hands together. Before she touched, 
Listen to me. Everybody did not know that when he was walking, listen to me, right now that you are seated, right now, you are looking at me, something in you is moving out. The, the, the strength and the extra it, how it moves is tied to the consciousness of you knowing what is in you. It's in your consideration. If you're so conscious, it moves out. And then it moves out to an extent how much you become like Christ will be the, the length or the strength. It can be the distance of my shadow. So the more of the, of, of the life as it moves, even as it goes in my, my shadow, touch you, my life goes with the shadow. Paul never played on handkerchiefs. No. Life is coming out of him. People said they put and then they go. He never carried handkerchief and said, let the life go. No, you don't do that. Life moves. Come on, shut up. Come on, put your hands together. So he said that something touched me. They said, I don't know something. The people didn't listen to me. Keep reading. When you keep, keep reading, in, 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 you know, in some few chapters after that, the Bible said that people throng on him to touch him because virtue was coming out of him. How did they know to run to touch him because life was coming out? Because one woman, meanwhile, while he was there, the life was going out. Nobody could touch, nobody could see. One woman saw it, touched it, became healed. Now everybody is throng him. There's a life that right now is coming out of you. It's healing your body. And that life has the power to heal that your daughter, that power to heal anything around you. I said, come on, put your hands together. I said, that's why that pain can't stay. That recurrent headache can't stay in your life right now. There's something stronger than that. It's coming out of you. Can you release it? Allow it. The life of God is in you. So you have to be able to set. There's a place that sent you. You have to learn. Don't put your mind on this earth. Put your mind where you came from. Anything that you exalt in your life, you show in your life. Exalt in your mind. I'm going to help you. Am I helping somebody here? Why do you have to set your mind there? The reason is because you're going to be constantly bombarded with people trying to remind you of the stupid who you used to be. Say you're weak, I... Nobody has ever done because I can hear you. You see, that's where you used to be. That's but that's not where you came from now. You're new. That's why you have to set. That's why sometimes you have to do detox session. You detox. As people are talking negative, run into your room, lock it up, carry your word, or in your imagination, set again. And keep looking onto your mind. Set on what you are in heaven. Set. Do you know set? Do you know set? Because pouring in, you know, you know, concrete. They set. Yes, set. Yes, set. That's how your mind is supposed to be set on the things where you're coming from. On health, on healing, on power, on rising, on breakthrough, on overcoming. No, we will try. We will fail. Maybe that Marco when I when I go there also go my say Fadi. No, 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 no. Bible might say Rachel will fall seven times. And well, no, no, I'm the perfection. There's no failure in you. Oh no, long, somebody did not hear what I'm talking about. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the life of give. Okay. Trying to accept your old normal is a sin. The world will want you to accept your old normal. And they will fight. After COVID, though COVID exposed the church with all our rhetoric and our shout. And they say, no, you have to be to be smart. No. So a new word came, they call it new normal. You see, that's the wrong word for COVID. My new normal came when I gave my life to Christ. And you are supposed to acclimatize yourself with the new normal. The new normal is from above. It's a new species. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're just arriving here. You can't experience the new normal if you don't know what the new normal is. Listen to me. There is supposed to be a new normal. And the new normal is the word. 
Some of you, you don't have any intercourse, interaction with your word. You have so much of this world, so much of TV, so much of movie. You have so much. You have so much of people, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, all kinds of things. But you don't have interaction with the world, all right? You can't explain. So, but how do you do that? You spend your time doing three things. Number one, with your imaginations. Number two, you spend your time with your thought. I need to be able to sit down, close my eyes, and see him exalted. See him exalted. And when I see him exalted, it means I can see me exalted. Because as he is, so am I. Set your mind where he's seated, where you are seated. I need to be able to see rays up where he is. But you see, not just him. I have to see myself exalted, raised up in him. I have to set my mind there. If it takes three days to make sure that imagination set, make sure you sustain it until it's set. The problem is that you're doing it, you're not, you're, you, you know, you're, 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 you don't settle for it to set. When you pour concrete, it doesn't set immediately. You have to allow it. In fact, in case you can move in that you're setting wrongly, that's a problem. The problem is that as you are looking, you're also looking at something and your setting is not right. You have to set. You have to look in your imaginations, in your thought. Like as you're walking, as you're doing everything, I am the righteousness of God. The life of God is in me. I'm exalted above cancer, above everything. I'm exalted. Whenever I arrive, I take over. Listen to me. You as a new creation, anywhere you enter, you're not the same with any other person there. You must know that. You're an alien being. That's why when you enter, you know, you know things. You hear things. You see things. Because you are not. Now, if you make a mistake and you think that you are from below, that's where you are going to have problem. If you are not seeing where you are, spend time in your imagination until it's set. You have to take time. Will it take hours? Will it take days? Take time in your thought. Practice that until it's set. The life of God is in me. The life of God, it flows in me. Anywhere I enter, it flows in me. The more of the consciousness, the more it grows. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, set your mind. I have set, you have to set your mind on things up there. And you have to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Look at your neighbor and say, keep doing it. Keep doing it. I say, keep doing it. Until I stay set. I have to keep seeing myself healed. Keep seeing myself until I stay set. It's set. You have to keep seeing. Uh, uh, ah, until it's set. Listen to me. The renewing of the mind is a constant thing. Two, four, seven. You are never changed by anointing oil. Neither are you ever changed by power. You are transformed by the renewing. Consistent renewing. And renewing of your mind is intentional. And his work. And I, maybe I will teach you. Look at your neighbor and say, then make sure it's set. Every time you're doing it, you're conforming to his image. Every time. So you're seeing the reason why you keep setting so that when the time you move out, you don't forget that you are Christ. That's what will allow you to reign. When you move and you forget what you are, you can't reign. What will make you reign is the life, is the mirror, is what you see. And you keep seeing until it's set. So that failure can never be around you. I have to look at what, what's normal in heaven in any situation. So when I meet a situation and people are saying, ah! The, the, and then the science, scientists, statistics. No, I need to find out what is normal in heaven because that's where I'm coming from and that's my new normal. And when everything is bad, I stay in my imagination and my thought until it's set. 
where he said, when I come now, you know, I'm not afraid like the other people. And I'm not behaving like the people in the world. Why? Because I'm an alien there. That's why you can walk into somebody that has a contagious disease. You know, so that, ah, can I I'm like, no, but you don't. the life in you can kill it. Oh, shut up, Parker. Shut up. There's some, oh, stop. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. The normal life, other people came, Yakama Susuna Mutua, and then you saw it on TV. In fact, sometimes the thing that you see creates fear in you, right? But where did the fear enter? Jesus said that I have not given you the spirit of fear. The new man doesn't have fear. The new man doesn't have single fear. So if there is fear, it's where your eyes and your mind is. You can't bring heaven on earth if you're not aware of the place that you came from. So I need to spend time recollecting, considering what it's like where I came from so that I can know what I'm supposed to be experiencing here on earth. That's why I need to spend time meditation so that I know what I know. A, the new man is made in the image of the invisible God. I need to spend so that by the time I come, other people are falling. I know what I need. I saw. I don't forget it. And the only way you don't forget is because you are a doer. You see, you see, let, let me, oh no, I don't have the time. I have seven minutes. I'm going to, but Mama, you want to have more? How many of you are happy in church? Listen to me. You see, they taught us in church that there is logos and there is rhema, right? That the rhema is the reveal word. And that's what you do. No, that's not. You see, the rhema is the logos that you do consistently. Then it becomes rhema. It's not that you have rhema, then you do. No, you pick logos and you keep doing it consistently. When you keep doing it consistently and it's set, that's when it's now rhema to you. Oh no, somebody got it. Somebody got it. Somebody got it. It's the logos. The, the word that you're supposed to do is not rhema. Read the word. When you go into the original, it's the logos. Whenever God says that's who you are, it's the logos. You keep doing it until you become it. When you become it, it's now rhema. It's not that you're waiting for a revealed word, then you do. No. You don't wait for rhema to do. You do the word until it becomes rhema. Oh, shut up. Oh, Bobo. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. Give me Romans 6, 4. Look at it. Therefore, we're buried in him. Baptism into that just as Christ. Just as. Just as. Just as. Just as. Just as. By the glory of the Father. Now, another dangerous statement. Even so. Even so. Even so. Now, look at this wicked word. We should walk in the old life. We should walk in what? New life. New life. New. That's why if any man is in Christ, a new creation. In that new creation, there is a new life. You have to know it and walk in that new life. Even so, even so, you should walk in the newness. There's a new life. The new life is the image of Christ. The new life is who, as he is. That's who you are. New life. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. The new life. Second Corinthians 5, 17 said that, you know, you know, if any man be in Christ, a new creation. A new creation. A new creation. You have never existed. You just appeared. So you grow up into it. You might be small. Maybe now. You grow up into it. That new creation is exact image of Jesus Christ. It's 100% exact. By the time you finish rising up, when they look at you, they should not see the difference between you and Christ. When they see you, what Christ, they are the same. That's why when you grow up and you speak, they will say that, who, who is speaking? Is it you or Jesus? It's both. 
And when you arrive there, you don't even have to ask permission because what you say is what he will say. Why? I am united with him. His life flows in me. When I take action, it's exactly what God will do. That's why when now I don't pray for the sick, I command the sick to go. Because, come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. The new life is a life made in the image of him. His life connected to him. A brand new flow. Brand new. And that's the new life. Once you're connected to that, something new is flowing in you. Let me announce to you. I said something new is flowing in you. Power is flowing in you. <laughs> Healing is flowing in you. You know, there's a Holy Spirit. Everything is a life where I reign as a king in this life. How are you going to reign? The only way you will reign is that you have to watch what you're exalting. Because anything you exalt reign in your life. Whatever you exalt, what's going is what's going to reign. Whatever is real to you in your faith and your imagination, that's what your, your faith is going to produce. Anything that is real to you and to your imagination, your faith will produce. Because your faith will follow your intention. So whatever is real to you and to your imagination, your faith will produce it. Let me say it again. Whatever is real to you and your imagination, your faith will produce it. Your faith produces. Because your faith will follow your intention. That's why when you leave your house, you say, I'm going to go to another house. I'm going to lay my hands and she will be healed. That's your intention and your faith follows it. That's why when you lay, she will be healed. Why? Because your faith will produce what you intended. Life is like that. That's, that's not the new life. This life hard. Things are bad. That's what your faith will produce. Because your faith will produce your intention. But those that have life, that life will make you to reign in life. If things change and goes up, you change, you go higher. Because the life can be killed. It can be suppressed. It can be derailed. It's power. It's always above life circumstances. You don't have faith problem. Let me say it again. The reason why I say, why? You have the faith of God. On Sunday I was, I was making this thing. How many of you, when you're giving your life to Christ, you have to dig your witches in your family. You dig your family background. You dig it you, until you finish digging before you receive forgiveness. Nobody did that. But you see, that forgiveness is the highest level of every miracle because that forgiveness hook you up to the root. The root and the fruit, which one is stronger? It's the root. If I didn't do any confession, I only confess Christ. I didn't do any digging to get the root. Why must I be doing confession and be doing checking my ancestral destiny to get what is coming out from the fruit? Somebody is dying again. So they said that you have to drink this, you have to do this, you have to do, wake up by 12, you have to do this. Why should I do that if I didn't do that to get the root? So if I want what is in the fruit, I don't do nothing. I stay connected to the root. Because what flows in me is tied to what I am connected to. How many of you did five steps before you get forgiveness? No. So why should you do five steps before you get healing? No. You stay connected. So come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. You don't have faith problem. <laughs> you, you, you are normal. If I tell you, and they said, the love of Christ is shed abroad. So do you have the love of God? Yes. And you don't have problem with that. You don't have problem with that. I got the peace of God. Yeah, you have it. You don't have problem. You don't have problem when I say that you have the joy of the Lord. Well, the joy of the Lord. Why do you have problem if I say that you have the faith of God? Because the peace of God, when God is coming, he will not bring one and leave one somewhere. When he comes, all of him comes. The peace, the joy, the faith. So you cannot say that now I have the peace, I have the love, so I need to work hard 
to get the faith. No. When he entered, when you have the joy, you have the peace, you have the faith, you have the faith of God. Listen to me. You don't have equipment problem. Everybody that is looking at me, you have the same equipment that Jesus had. You don't have an equipment problem. You have an awareness problem. And anything that you're not aware of, you can't use it. You have a consciousness problem. How many of you, you had money in your pocket, but you don't know. Then you wanted to buy something, and then, then later you just go, you just know, later then, then you see money that could buy 10 times what you're trying to. Why were you able to use that money? You are not aware of it. The reason why the power cannot work, if it is not, you're not aware. It's there. You're not conscious. You're not aware. You don't have equipment problem. You don't have an equipment problem. My equipment functions properly. Listen to me. Everything that God gave me, look at me, it works great. You're a forgetful hearer. Why? Because you're not a doer of the word. And there are some things that he gave you. Number one, he gave you his word. Number two, he gave you his name. Number three, he gave you his power. Number four, he gave you his Holy Spirit. Number five, he gave you his life. All of this thing is still one thing. Equipment. And the equipment works. It is the same equipment that Jesus used it working on earth. Why are you not working? You're not conscious of it. How will you be conscious of it? You have to practice it. Every day you wake up, the life of God is in you. I'm walking in the newness of life. I've never appeared. I'm just arriving. I'm a new man. <laughs> a new man. Never appeared. You have never seen it. Never. That's why I'm not connected to anything of the cause. Nothing that flows in my family flows in this new man. This new man is made in the mold of new species. They are the Joseph generation. Never existed. Come on, are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yeah, come on. Abu Yana chicken kakonku. No, buy a chicken kakana. Inka bi kakana da kadu de ubengi chin Yesu Allah al Kadiri bu ayi gagara misali. Kago de bi mana. When you follow it, why? When I came out, I came from the mold called Christ, and I'm rising in Him. Try, try tracing my my route. Da kadu de Allah bu ayi gagara misali. Man halitan sama da kasa. When the hands is there, pa te kuya bazu. Mountain the sugar genshi sum para sale kamaragu. Follow my lineage. I want number and be asad and dafama akoya. No, 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 no. When a man, when any man is in Christ, something appeared. You have never seen it before. In the newness of life. Come and put your hands together. I said, come and put your hands together. I don't have the anger of my family. I don't have proclivities. No, the, the proclivities are proclivities of God. My mind is set where I'm coming from. I have the mind of Christ. I think like God. I act like God. I laugh like God. I feel like God. I have God's emotion. I'm made in the image of the invisible God. When you see me, you see the Father. Come on, put your hands together. Some of you are swelling. My turn, yeah? Turn, yeah, carry. But I'm going to carry it. Turn, yeah, carry. It is not... You don't have a resource problem. You don't have an equipment problem. You have too much resource. Too much. Too much God. Too much bigness. Too much. Too much of power. Too much of everything. Too much. It's so too much that you can go into your neighborhood. Too much of life. Too much. You got to know who you are. You're having an awareness problem, not an equipment problem. Your apparatus are together, they're tight. How do I know that it works? I saw Jesus use the same equipment and it worked. The life of God is in you. Everything works. Wombs are rearranged. Spam count is being normalized. Babies are held in this house. Wombs are receiving seed, holding the seed. Nine months, no miscarriages. Death is crushed. I see Satan fall like lightning. The life of God is the inside of you. Nothing of the cause can stay. 
the power of God is already here, saturated. It's in the atmosphere. If you're sick, listen to me. Every weakness, sickness, infirmity, go. You can't stay. Out! You can't stay here. The life of God is already in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. If there's anybody that is supposed to be proud, you are the, in fact, you're supposed to be walking like this. The bigness of God is in the inside of you. Someone said, who do you think you are? Ask them, how much time do you have? Because now for a guy, I'm like, who I am. But I can tell you, I'm male in the same mold of Christ. If you see me, you're, why are you, who are you? I am Jesus that you're persecuting. I am Christ, the person. I mean, the people. I'm the body of Christ. I'm supposed to rise up so that by the time you see me and you see Christ standing by me, you won't know who is Christ and who is Biasa. You're a dispenser of life. The life has an agenda and has a mission. You can never be stranded. You meet a problem, you create it. You don't have time, go to your room. Create in your thought and your imagination. You meet the sea, lay hands. Your equipment are working. Life flows. Command it to go. You don't pray for the sick. You command sickness to go. If there's a demon, ask the demon to go. You need it to go, they receive. Put your hand, it flows. The flow flows your intention. It flows. Hold it. Release it. Right now that you are standing and you are looking at me, everything of God is in the inside of you. The life of God. That's why you can't be sick. The same spirit that raised Jesus is in the inside of you. And if that same spirit is, that spirit gives life. It gives life to your mortal flesh. I see doors opening. Just a generation arising, newness of life. Hallelujah. I will, I, will, I will continue on Sunday. How many of you are blessed? You're blessed. I don't know why God kept me here, you know, but you know that I'm dealing with Christ the people. So we took time to know the Joseph generation are a type of Christ.